Hey everybody, my name is Emily and I am an assistant youth and teen librarian here at Fayetteville Public Library. This is the July episode of the Box Book Society. This month we are talking about book to screen adaptations. So every book that I am about to talk to you guys about has a movie or a TV show adaptation attached to it. This is our last summer meeting until we get to September, in which we are doing sci-fi. So we're taking a break in August. Um, we will not see you guys until after the school year has started. If you are new here, the way that the Box Book Society works is that each month, my co-worker Stacy and I put together a box that features the book of the month, a drink, and some snacks, um, as well as a bookmark and a button um, for you guys to enjoy throughout the month, and then at the end of the month, we meet to discuss the book that we chose. This is the introduction video. Um, there is also one of these at the beginning of every month, and I'm just going to tell you guys some recommendations within the theme that you guys can read if you're interested in more books like the one that we focused on that month. Now this month is a little different because it is book to screen, so I tried to pull books from every genre that have an adaptation. Of course, teen adaptations are popular right now, so there are a ton more than what I'm going to give you. Um, these are just a few that I've either seen recently or have recently come out or that are from my favorite books. Our book of the month for July is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. Um, this one was adapted a couple of years ago, I want to say 2018. Now this book follows Natasha um, on her adventure in New York City um, when she meets Daniel. They fall in love almost immediately and the catch is that Natasha's family is about half a day away from being deported back to Jamaica. This book takes place all in one day um, and it's just about um, their relationship, them dealing with the fact that her family is about to be deported. This book was a National Book Award finalist. I think it, it won a couple of other recognitions as well. We are very excited to talk with you guys about this one. And of course, since this is a book to screen adaptation, we also have the movie available for you guys to check out here at the library. Now to get into some recommendations. The first one is pretty popular. I wanted to talk a little bit about Shadow and Bone. So with Shadow and Bone, there's a Netflix series that premiered a couple of months ago, um, and it has since regained popularity. Um, but Shadow and Bone first became popular in the early 2010s. So Shadow and Bone follows Alina, uh, a map maker in a fantasy Russia type world, as she sets off on an adventure to cross the fold, which is this giant, massive, looming, dark cloud that holds monsters and creatures and danger. Um, and as she's crossing, she unveils this power in that she can summon light at command. And so she's thrown into this whirlwind of political intrigue as she learns that with someone named the Darkling, she can destroy the fold and reunite the two halves of her kingdom. Now, there are other people waiting in the wings that have other ideas. And so Alina becomes a target unbeknownst to her um, and she you know, tumbles headfirst into this crazy plot to, you know, reunite her kingdom or tear it apart for good. The Netflix show, I can confirm, is amazing. Um, absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite adaptations I've ever seen. Um, it also includes characters from the Six of Crows duology, which is a sequel duology to Shadow and Bone. If you like Shadow and Bone and you end up finishing it, I would give Six of Crows a try before you watch the show, just so that you're familiar with the characters. Um, it is a prequel to Six of Crows, so there isn't a ton to be spoiled, um, but they do change up the timeline and stuff like that. It's really complicated, but it's really good. It's worth it. The next book that I have to talk to you guys about is a little darker. It's um, realistic fiction. It's called The Miseducation of Cameron Post uh, by Emily Danforth. And this one, when I say it's dark, I mean it's dark. Um, 
it is about a girl, a lesbian teen, who is forced into a conversion camp um, in somewhere in the South. I don't know if it's Texas or Arkansas or what. And it's about her journey, basically just having a horrible, horrible time um, at this horrible place and um, learning things about herself that she never thought that she would, um, meeting people who support her no matter what. The movie stars Chloe Grace Moretz. For another <laughs> lighter, realistic fiction adaptation, I want to point you guys towards Every Day by David Levithan. Um, this one was also adopted a couple of years ago. It is about a teen named A who wakes up in a different body every day but falls in love with one of their classmates. And so at this point, A starts to try and contact this girl and let her know, you know, what's going on. And they end up falling in love. And it's this whole whirlwind of, you know, what's going on? How is this happening? Um, I love David Levithan. He's one of my personal favorite authors. He, this book and the adaptation, um, questions a lot about gender identity, um, fluidity, all that good stuff. And it's just a really interesting concept. I really enjoyed this adaptation too. This is probably the closest recommendation to The Sun is Also a Star. So if you guys um, finish that one or when you finish it and you really liked it, I would give David Levithan a try. The next book recommendation I have for you is called The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness. Now this one is wacky y'all. So it just got, like, just now, like, it's probably still in theaters, got an adaptation with Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley. And this movie has been in the works for probably a decade, um, and it finally got put out into theaters. Now, this adaptation wasn't my favorite, but it is a very fun movie. In this dystopian world, our main character's name is Todd, and he lives in a village with all men um, and there are no women left on the planet. They don't live on Earth, they live on a planet that is very similar to Earth's atmosphere. Um, I think they call it the New World. And one day a spaceship crashes and a girl comes out and Todd finds this girl, but then Todd realizes that the girl is in danger because there is something called the noise where um, only men something about when you enter the this planet's atmosphere men's thoughts are projected outside of their head so nothing is private everything can be heard from anyone surrounding them so this girl viola can hear everything that todd and all the other men are saying so this girl viola can hear everything that todd and the other men are thinking um todd ends up whisking her away to try and save her because stuff's a brewing behind all these men's eyes and it's not good you know when you find out that the past and the incidences with the women and why the women went extinct are more extreme than you originally thought um so this one again super unique idea super important concepts that are discussed in it but it is very dystopian this one's for fans of like divergent hunger games legend maze runner or if you just like tom holland and daisy ridley like i do and again it is still in theaters so you could always read it and then go pop over um and watch it in theaters the last book i have to tell you guys about was one of my favorite series when i was in junior high and high school um it's kind of fallen by the wayside it is a weird like paranormal twilight adjacent but it's better than twilight i promise it's like a gothic story um it's called beautiful creatures there was a very bad bad movie adaptation um again very enjoyable to watch don't get your hopes up they change a lot but um it follows and see here's the unique thing about this is that with a lot of the paranormal romances that you see in teen they're all from a girl's point of view and this one was the first and maybe only one that I've seen that is from a boy's point of view. So the main character's name is Ethan and he lives in one of the southern states. It's like Georgia or Louisiana or one of them, Alabama. Um, pretty sure it's Georgia. And he 
lives in this really amazing small southern gothic town um, where there's a lot of conservative people, um, a lot of religious people, and there is a kind of an outcast that lives in this giant mansion in the middle of the woods and his niece comes to stay with him and this niece starts going to the school that Ethan goes to and when he sees her he realizes that this is the girl from all these weird dreams that he's been having recently um, and you know when he has these dreams they're not just dreams he'll wake up and there's mud on his feet there's branches in his hair and he doesn't know what's happening he doesn't know where he goes and so some signs start pointing to this girl Lena being a witch and um, of course as you know in a southern conservative religious town obviously that is not a good thing. Um, she starts being targeted, persecuted, um, just for who she is and who her uncle is. Things start falling into place as Ethan starts getting closer to Lena and things get dangerous for him as well because he starts uncovering things that he really shouldn't be. Um, and there's a bunch of different twists and turns in this one. There's a lot of little intricate details. Um, the series has four books and a couple of different offshoots. The adaptation, I want to say is from like 2013, 2014. Um, it has a lot of major stars in it. Viola Davis, Emma Thompson, Emmy Rossum. Great actors. I'll let you decide how you feel about the adaptation because I just don't like it. But I love, love, love the book series. Um, if you are into anything paranormal or paranormal romance or, you know, urban fantasy, go for it. It's amazing. I really love it. And I feel like it's one that's very underappreciated in the teen paranormal scene. So yeah, that is Beautiful Creatures by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. So that is all that I have for you guys today. Um, this is the last time we're meeting until September. So we're skipping August. And um, when we come back in September, we're reading Renegades by Marissa Meyer for our science fiction month. We've got some other good stuff coming up later this year in October. We're talking about spooky books. And then in November, we're talking about graphic novels. Um, we've got some good fantasy picks, realistic fiction in that graphic novel section. If you haven't already signed up, for the Box Book Society for July, I would go ahead and do that. We do tend to fill it pretty fast. We've got 12 spots. Our monthly meeting this month is Monday, July 26th at 4 p.m. And as we've been doing with the past couple of months, when you sign up, you either choose in-person or Zoom. Um, in person, we'll all be wearing masks. Uh, Miss Stacy and I are both vaccinated. We'll be in a big conference room. We can sit apart we're being as safe as we can be um but you can always choose the zoom option it's whatever you're comfortable with all right that is all that i have for you guys today i thank you for watching and if this was your first box book society video you can go back to our other videos and watch the recommendations for our other months you can follow us on facebook and instagram for other updates and i will see you guys next time bye